Good evening. This is November 13, 2012, Miami, Florida, the home of Arthur Denchfield. And uh, this is the Mercator map that we've talked about many, many times, uh, which Dad made in Brazil in the late 1930s before he got married at St. Cecilia Factory in Sao Paulo State, Brazil. And uh, that's a statue of Our Lady Fatima. And uh, the American flag to her left and our right is right over my dad. And today would have been his 106th birthday. So we wanted to say a few words about recent events and also about, about the saint of the day. Let's see if I can get this on a good place here, like that. There we go. Today is the feast day of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. She's the patron saint of immigrants. She's the first uh, U.S. citizen to become to be canonized, and um, she's helped us a lot. Um, I'm one of the founding members of the American Society for the Defense of Tradition Family Property. That's the symbol, the lion, golden lion rampant, and the fundraising efforts of the society over the years. St. Francis. Xavier Cabrini has, has played a pivotal role. And um, we asked her, we asked her now to pray for America. We were at the hospital in Chicago where she died, in the very room, and, 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 and we touched the very chair where she passed away on the 22nd of December, 1917. We visited uh, Chicago with uh, another gentleman from the TFP back in 1975 and we crisscrossed all over the United States. And uh, there were many graces in that room, uh, the room where St. Francis Xavier Cabrini uh, breathed her last. And we're going to have her story, the story written by Plinio Correa de Oliveira, whose picture you see behind me to the left. He will have her story, and that will be on the link underneath this video. And as far as my dad is concerned, well, here's a picture of my dad right here, underneath the eagle, right here. That was taken on the, on the 13th of October, 1917, in Asheville, North Carolina. And he's right underneath the eagle there. And this is our morning. You can't see it now because the it's out of range. At any rate, we want to wish Dad a happy birthday, and we're confident that, uh, that you're in heaven after spending a number of years in purgatory and um, the last thing that my father read before he passed on was this book the church of silence in chile and the date he wrote me a letter after he he, he wrote this uh, he wrote his uh he, he put his name in here july 1st 1981 and then his, uh, his name, and he wrote me a letter. I was in Munich, Germany. By the time I got the letter, uh, he had already passed on. He died on the 3rd of July, but my mother, that was the first Friday of the month of July, and Divine Providence, Our Lady, inspired me to pray a very special prayer for him during Holy Communion. Went to a Latin Tridentine Mass there, St. Peters Kirche in Munich, and I prayed very strongly for my father's soul. Uh, I didn't know that he had passed on at that moment, but I, I believe now, uh, looking back, thinking back, that uh, that prayer helped immensely uh, to, to, to save him. And uh, mother later told all of us, four, that dad had, wake, he had awakened at about 2.30, 3 o'clock that morning, um, and he woke up my mother and said, I just had a dream. I was in a, in a boat in a storm in the sea. It was a, 
real raging storm, all kinds of other boats around me, and then he and then he went to sleep and he never woke up again. He died of a massive heart attack. But concerning this book that he read, the Church of Silence in Chile, the TFP proclaims the whole truth, an urgent matter for Americans to ponder. <clears throat> this book was criticized by then communist Radio Moscow, the Spanish edition. This book shows with 200 documents the complicity of the Catholic hierarchy of Chile in the ascendancy and the presidency of Salvador Allende and the Communist Party in Chile in the early 1970s. And it was instrumental in helping mobilize the Chilean people uh, against the communist threat and that was that was threatening their economy and rendering all kinds of intolerable situations the kind of which we could now expect here in the United States we uh, we asked St. Francis Xavier Cabrini patron saint of immigration to pray a lot for these United States of America where she died in 1917 the same year that Our Lady Fatima appeared uh, and the same year that that picture was taken of my father, 1917 in Asheville, a few months before St. Francis Xavier Cabrini passed away. And that is that, that the socialism and the communism that has descended upon America may be very short-lived. And that Almighty God and His infinite wisdom and His great love for every soul uh, may meet out the kind of justice that that a mocking people deserve. The majority of the American people do not mock God, but a certain number of them do. And uh, when we read a tweet that says, America has spoken, the Christians must listen, uh, this really brings to mind uh, some things. And then also the fact that same-sex marriage was, was voted legal in three states, in the, these United States, uh, against the wishes of the U.S. Catholic bishops in those states who campaigned uh, mightily against this legislation or this, this voting on the 6th of November, uh, says something about says something about the memory, the short-term memory of a lot of people. God is God. God does not change. His Ten Commandments do not change. And uh, history does not change. And the history is that in the Old Testament times, uh, two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, were destroyed by the wrath of God because of same-sex perversions. That literally happened. And uh, for people to say that the uh, GOP was not tolerant enough to include uh, the kind of people that God destroyed in the Old Testament well, that's, that's really, that's mocking God, and that's asking for more of the same. And so we, we suggest that what you do, besides praying every day for this country, is that you keep your eyes on the weather, weather stories, uh, natural disaster stories. We contend that the number of earthquakes all over the world has increased a lot since November 6th, since this country, by massive voter fraud gave uh, Barack Hussein Obama, who is an in ineligible to hold the position of president because he was born in Mombasa, Kenya, Africa. His grandmother witnessed his, his birth, that is to say his, uh, <clears throat> um, his father, Obama Sr.'s mother, uh, not his, that, that's not his biological father. His biological father was Frank Marshall Davis of Hawaii, and we've already talked about that. And uh, what we have now is we have an imposter in the White House who calls himself a commander-in-chief, but what, what he really is, if you, if you look carefully, he's a commander-in-sin, commander-in-chief of sin, because through executive orders, he forces sin on those institutions and people for whom sin is abhorrent. And what we say to the American people, those of you who are without electricity, I mean, you, you won't see this because you're without electricity, but those of you who have electricity and will lose your electricity and, and suffer other 
tragedies in the very near future if you you know blame blame those who voted obama into office and also blame the machinery that made it possible because a lot of fraud took place how could philadelphia how could hundreds of thousands of philadelphians have voted zero for romney there's a whole section of philadelphia where uh, romney did not get a single vote now that that has to be voter fraud and uh, this is just one of many examples of uh, voter fraud that took place uh, where electronic machines that were pressed for Romney the lights came out for Obama and so on and so forth and you can read about this on WND.com uh, Newsmax.com and the like I'll have the links behind uh, below this video again we wanted to honor our father who would have been 106 years old today he was born in New York City November 13, 1906, to Dr. Arthur Lee Denchfield, Sr., M.D., uh, and, and Sarah, Jane, uh, Sarah Jane O'Brien Denchfield, my, my dear grandmother from Ireland. She came over from Ireland at the age of 17 during the potato famine there, and she worked in New York City, and she was 10 years older than my grandfather, and they married, and he went to medical school and uh, became a doctor, and moved his practice to Asheville, North Carolina, where the Denchfields grew up as a family, my dad and my aunt. And then eventually, um, my grandparents moved back, they moved to New Jersey, where they retired. And I showed you a picture in an earlier video uh, of my grandparents, and I believe it was in Union City, New Jersey, 1947 picture. My grandfather died in 1955, and my grandmother died a few early, a uh, few years before that. At any rate, we asked St. Francis Xavier Cabrini to intercede mightily for us, for this country, because uh, her love for the Sacred Heart of Jesus was so great, and her confidence in divine providence was so great that she was able to open convents and hospitals all over the world. And her great work, her, her great hospital in Chicago, is the one where she passed into her eternal reward. And we were very privileged to have been in the room uh, where she met uh, the Lord. On, uh, the, you know, we were there in 1975. And now it seems that America is going to go through a very difficult period. This whole business with the military and the scandals... Jesus asked us, avoid scandal. What are those that bring scandal to the world? And we have to be very suspicious. We, we tend to uh, agree with, uh, with the father of the lady in question that there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye. But we don't, we don't have any confidence that the government is going to tell the truth about this. And we're relying on, on, on WorldNet Daily, Newsmax, Breitbart.com, MichelleMalkin.com, Monica Crowley, uh, and so on, and Fox News, to, to, to the extent that they're able to uncover this, we rely on them for giving us the information on what's going on, because the lamestream media absolutely refuse to look into the Benghazi Gate affair, and they will not uh, tell us the truth. And now that it's spiced up with a sex scandal, because uh, David Petraeus had to resign from the CIA as director, thanks to his affair and so on, and then other military people are getting involved. The stories are changing, and it's all a sign of the times. So what we want to leave you with is the following. We suggest you go see that movie, 2012. It was made in 2009. It's about an event that's supposed to take place on the 21st of December this year, 2012, according to the Mayan calendar. We submit that if everything that they say about that Ma Mayan calendar is true, that it, it is likely that Almighty God in His great wisdom and mercy reveals something to the Mayans about this, about the future. And we like to think and imagine that a golden age awaits us if only the Holy Father would obey Almighty God's 1929 request to consecrate Russia, great country of Russia with 12 time zones to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and that would initiate uh, a whole series of 
actions all over the world in which not only communism and socialism would collapse all over the world immediately, including in the United States of America, in Venezuela, in Cuba, and uh, in Ecuador, and all those nations of Africa that are run by democratic republics of this, that, and the other, including uh, Zimbabwe. But the reign of Mary would begin, which has to happen before the end of the world. Christ the King has to reign on this earth according to prophecy in the Bible, all the nations have to become his footstool, and that has not happened yet. And so we pray that uh, Almighty God, in his great mercy, through the intercession of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, inspire the Holy Father and the bishops to do their job, to do it now, before the 21st of December, or around the 21st of December, so that uh, those of us who love God uh, may not perish, by all the lies and all the seductions of this high-tech age. God bless America.